Nuclear industry officials from around the world have gathered in Seoul to discuss atomic energy safety. Global leaders are also scheduled to meet next week at the Nuclear Security Summit in South Korea. NHK World's Kim Dae-yong has more. Some 200 industry representatives took part in the Nuclear Industry Summit on Friday. They exchanged views on how to make nuclear energy safer based on lessons from last year's accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan. And now back to our favorite hobby here on the internet, yelling at retards and telling them they're wrong. One participant said public trust in nuclear energy can be restored if they share lessons gleaned from the accident and learn from them. Another said, sharing information on nuclear technology is difficult because it often contains confidential data. But he added that cooperation between private companies as well as governments needs to be strengthened. The participants issued a joint statement that said the nuclear industry will get more actively involved in global information sharing and discussions through organizations such as the International Atomic Energy Agency. Several countries have scrapped nuclear energy since the Fukushima disaster and others are debating its use. This summit meeting has become a great opportunity for businesses wanting to boost their exports to showcase their strength. Kim Dae-yong, NHK World, Seoul. Japanese leaders are facing one of the toughest decisions of the year, whether or not to restart idle nuclear reactors, or plants, I should say. Last year's Fukushima Daiichi accident prompted the government to impose new checks on reactors that go offline for regular maintenance. Now, the Nuclear Safety Commission has endorsed the results of stress tests on two reactors in central Japan. Authorities have introduced the stress test to check how reactors can withstand earthquakes and tsunami beyond predicted levels. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency approved the test last month on the two reactors at the OE nuclear plant in Fukui Prefecture. Now, the Nuclear Safety Commission says the tests have demonstrated the effectiveness of emergency measures taken after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The NSC calls the test a significant step but it says it's not in a position to judge whether reactors should be allowed to restart. Japan's nuclear agency has compiled a basic plan on regulating power plant operators to prevent serious accidents beyond anything assumed probable. It's to be incorporated into new safety regulations after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency formulated the plan after consulting with scientists on preventing severe accidents. It seeks to offer guidance to operators to continuously raise their safety levels. They hope to build a system to reflect lessons learned from nuclear accidents at home and abroad, as well as research results. The document says accidents beyond one's assumptions could occur. It calls for measures at each stage of a severe accident, such as damage to nuclear fuel rods and the release of a large amount of radioactive substances. It also calls for measures against such risks as terrorist attacks and aircraft accidents. Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda will meet next week with three senior cabinet ministers. They'll talk about whether the endorsement of stress tests is sufficient to obtain local approval to restart the two OE reactors. The government believes a restart will be necessary to ensure electricity supply throughout the summer. Officials also argue reactors should come back offline because of a possible rise in prices of crude oil and natural gas. Industry Minister Yuki Edano and other ministers will brief local officials in early April and explain the government's position on restarts. But serious obstacles remain. Authorities in Fukui and neighboring prefectures continue to express concerns over the safety of the OE plant. Plus, the governor of Fukui is opposed to an immediate restart. He says safety standards should, be, should take into account lessons from the Fukushima accident. Japan has 54 nuclear reactors. 52 of them are currently offline, including the four crippled units at the Fukushima Daiichi. No reactors will be operating by May if the government does not approve the restarts. 
Of the two reactors still running, engineers will halt one in Niigata Prefecture on Monday for regular inspection. The second reactor is on the northern island of Hokkaido. It is scheduled to go offline in late April or May. 37 of Japan's reactors were operating before the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi. The suspensions have not resulted in serious power shortages over the past year. But Japan is importing more fossil fuels to run thermal plants to make up for its energy shortfall. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda says he will stake his political reputation on successfully enacting the consumption tax bill during the current parliamentary session. He hopes to raise the consumption tax rate from 5% to 10% in two stages by 2015. There is no significance for the existence of my cabinet. If no progress is made and decision reached at this stage of negotiations, I will do everything in my power with unyielding resolve to enact the consumption tax bill during the current diet session. Noda also said his cabinet is determined to use all means possible to gain approval for the bill. The Prime Minister hopes to submit the tax legislation to Parliament before April 1st, when the new fiscal year begins. However, he faces opposition even from within his ruling party, mainly from those members close to former leader Ichiro Ozawa and former Prime Minister Yukio Hatoyama. UN Secretary General Pang Ki moon has expressed concern about North Korea's planned rocket launch. He called it an act of provocation. The UN chief met with South Korean President Im Myung Bak in Seoul on Saturday. They discussed the North's announcement that it would launch a satellite between the 12th and 16th of April. Pan and Yi agreed that the act would violate UN resolutions, banning any launch using ballistic missile technology. They also criticized North Korea for spending money on a rocket launch when so many of its people are suffering from hunger. The South Korean president has welcomed Pan's call on North Korea to cancel its plan. He said South Korea and the United Nations will work closely together on the matter. President Yi will hold separate talks with U.S. President Barack Obama and Chinese President Hu Jintao during the Nuclear Security Summit, which opens in Seoul on Monday. He's expected to step up pressure on the North by highlighting international opposition to the launch.